It's just me today. Um, I've, I've, Tyler had to uh, move on from Dennis Sunday. <laughs> so I've hired my, uh, my, my <laughs> trusting partner, uh, David Newber. He's going to be my sidekick. At Dennis on a man. Hey, trades happen all the time. Hey, Rocky. you know what? Uh, <laughs> we got uh, we had to trade away a bunch of draft picks to get you. Um, here we are at uh, at Ocean Ceramics. I'm joined by the lovely Dave Newber. Um, today we're talking about opportunity, opportunity for growth in the practice. Um, what sort of opportunity, David? What what kind of opportunity are we talking about numbers wise? Well. I think the simplest way to put it is most dentists out there, when it comes to larger restorative treatment plans, they feel either nervous talking about it because they're afraid of losing the patient from scaring them away. But normally the larger treatment plans are 20, 30, 40 and higher thousand uh, dollar treatment plans. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that uh, if you, you know, learn the skills, how to talk about it, how to do it, you're going to you're going to see your your practice uh, revenues grow exponentially. So confidence with education, with knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, great. Um, and, and we talk about this, you know, moving away from being just a single unit dentist, right? Correct. That's what that's how Doctor Morangos puts it, and I, I think that's kind of a good way to look at it as well. Um, also uh, joining us here is we've got. Uh, hang on here. We've got Greg here. I'm just gonna bring him into the scene. There we go. There he hey, is. Hey, Greg. Gentlemen. There he yeah. is. How Thank are you? you for having me. And uh, your last name is uh, Kamseko. <laughs> <You're>, uh, <laughs> yes. It's, it's actually it's, it's actually pronounced Greg from Bio Research ninety percent of the time. There you yeah. go, Greg uh, from Bio Research. If, if, if you're from Poland or Chicago, you pronounce it Kamishak. Yeah. Uh, beyond yeah. that, beyond that, you don't have to. I'm the only Greg with the company. <laughs> it just gets if you join us, you have to change your name. So, it's easy and, to get. and and we went over this before. It's 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 a it's a stream rock. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean it's the uh, the smooth rocks at the bottom of a of go. a stream. Is, is so what it means. so we're expecting you to be like super super smooth today. So That's right, smooth. Now. Yeah, That's right. Not enough O's in the word smooth. <laughs> <laughs> so if, 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 if David here is providing the knowledge for the opportunity, I would say that you uh, provide sort of the, the tools and the diagnostic to, to, mm -hmm. to, to help navigate that opportunity. Would that be uh, a correct assumption? Yeah, we, I've I've worked with uh, Dave and James and the the the, the whole Dentifor crew now, geez, over twenty years. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, it's there. What and and what 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 my company does? Our our focus, our specialty is diagnostic aids for the jaw joint, craniofacial muscles, jaw movement, and the occlusion. Uh, we do carry some treatment devices, some therapeutic lasers, some cutting lasers, tens units, but. Um, as an organization, we don't have a treatment philosophy. So, um, a, a lot of our, you know, a lot of our clients are, you know, whether you know from the Dawson Panky joint philosophy, uh, neuromuscular philosophy, the the, the nephrologic philosophy. Um, we don't push how you should treat. You know, mm -hmm. people like Dennis Morangos, people like uh james and dave newber people like edmund lean they they can teach you that because they do that um what we do is we measure the parts of the physiology that matter to your dentistry Perfect. so when you start doing larger cases you start having bigger impacts in that world and and we're the ones who give you the tools to know where you are and if you're having the impact you hope to have yeah Awesome. Um, so let's let's kind of touch on the relationship here. So um, David sure. and James are, are 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 in deep with with Denifor, um and this whole philosophy um, led by Dennis Morangos and Edmund Liam here in Vancouver um, at at the helm. Um, take yeah. it away. Yeah. David. Ultimately, what we found, uh, Mark, is that uh, you know when you get into larger treatment plans. You, you can't work in the confines of the bite that patients have evolved to. 
-hmm. Okay. Now, sometimes it's even as simple as a smile. You know, you've got worn down dentition and a patient comes up, says, I want a new smile. Um, and doctors that have been burned enough about building new smiles to overclose occlusion, it doesn't normally end well. And then the patient's looking at them slash us at fixing it, fix the problem that we've done, or even worse, they go to the college and say, you know what, what kind of treatment is this? You know, I, this doctor such and such uh, provided me these restore and they're breaking. And that is the worst case scenario. And so what we wanted to do, James and I realized a long time ago that all the, the big cases that we did to those overclosed and trapped occlusions, um, we weren't really doing, we were fixing teeth, but we weren't optimizing airway, jaw joint, muscles, and then teeth. Gotcha. It, it was just, we're fixing teeth. And so we wanted to do something proactive and way back in the day, um, like Greg mentioned 20 years ago, first person we were exposed to was Dr. James Carlson back in the day. Um, and uh, he was the one first one to open our eyes at these are some fundamental tools that you got to do to build a healthy occlusion that complements the airway and the jaw joint and the muscles. They're all happy. And so that is what we were just discussing is less than 10% of dentists, general dentists as a whole, actually know. Oh, look at us. Uh, oh, we've got a special guest. Oh, wow, it was special <laughs> arrival. <laughs> No, that's okay. It's okay. We'll let yeah. you set up. It's, it's okay. We're, we're just live. <laughs> um, and, well, I, we're, right. like, I, had to, I was saying that we had to trade away a couple draft picks for you. Yeah. To, to, to it was up, a yeah. big trade. It was yeah, a big to get to trade. David, yeah. <laughs> so, let, so, so how, how does these two worlds work together? Okay, let's, so let's talk about that. When very early on, what we realized Sorry. is Greg and his his company and the electrodiagnostic equipment that they um, were an intricate part of this, let's just call it optimizing a jaw relationship. You know, like for example, there's a lot of, we'll just use the analogy of a, a medical doctor. If you've got, if they do put a stethoscope to your heart and they hear there's problems, they don't just treat on that. They need further accurate records. Okay, and that's very similar to what Greg that I've seen his company does for a lot of dentists that want to do larger restorative treatment plans with people that have sick jaw joints. They can't just go by, oh, there's a click there. Well, let's go in there and, and fix this. The, you know, the next level is you need diagnostic, actual uh, hard data to show this is sick this is healthy and this is how we're going to get there we show them how, docs how to get there and greg you can fill this in greg his equipment is the equipment that essentially can prove in a court of law that you've actually improved their health do you or want to expand haven't on that? made it worse you know <laughs> that's even worse that's that's a good point <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is this is something really big. What, what, what you should do is go to any TMD craniofacial pain online forum for the patients. Type in what caused your craniofacial pain problem, your jaw joint problem, your muscle problem, your tooth problem. Go to bed, get up the next morning, and watch dentists just get assassinated behind their back. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and it's and it's not that and I'm, what I'm not saying is that yeah. dentists are going out there and hurting people because they're not. But no. when you start to get in and, and, and you guys can I'm sure you, you've seen this hundreds of times as you get into more complex cases. Right. As you get in, as you grow past single tooth dentistry, you start looking at things like changing vertical dimension. You start looking at things like, well, wait a minute. What? what if, if, if the occlusion is built up higher on one side than the other and everything is cocked, do, do I want to, do I want to build to that? Yeah, right. Exactly, precisely. And so if the patient has subclinical things that they've adapted to, I I've even seen this in third molar extraction. I, I the number of people mm. who say I was fine 
until I had my wisdom teeth out, or I was fine until I had ortho. And that's not just, you know, big stuff like, you know, maxillary expansion stuff. That's Invisalign stuff. That's clear mm-hmm. aligners. Mm-hmm. You know, I just changed the way that my teeth come together. Now everything is blown up. The thing didn't change it. What it did was it exacerbated an underlying problem. Yeah. So is this is this right. sort of the f- the fear to jump in to this to this type That's of procedure to this of type of practice? You start doing twenty thirty thousand dollar cases. You better you know what I mean. You better yeah. know that you at sure. least have done no harm. That's the beginning of medicine. Yeah. And how yeah. would how would you guys deliver the confidence then? So I think we're. I'll start with that. Is you know what we see is the growing evolution of when dentists, general dentists. First of all, I want to make sure I explain that general dentists are the biggest ones that are under attack. Prosthodontists, they have a, a, a degree, they're specialists, they're not going to get attacked, okay, uh, for anything that possibly goes maybe awry. Mm-hmm. But um, general dentists, for sure, are like targets if something doesn't quite go and last as long as it should. And we know there are plenty of general dentists doing extremely large implant cases, all on four, five, six. Right. Um, I'm not just talking, you know, dentures and stuff, like even though that's a very important aspect to what we're doing, but at the end, what, what I want everyone to leave knowing is you know, what is the biggest motivator to come here, to come to Dena4, is what that, what your patient has evolved to in their bite, okay, is not necessarily the healthiest position to restore to. And if you just arbitrarily open that bite without test driving it to some degree, without actually putting a burr to it, that's gets to be a really wild card as far as uh because the second a dentist puts a bird to a tooth they're engaged and they're committed right. okay they're committed yeah. but what we're teaching in dentifor is look identify that there's a problem go through an orthotic progression f- make sure that the patient is a hundred percent uh happy that with this new jaw relationship then let's explore how to restore to that position that's in a nutshell. Yeah, that makes sense. We're to trying me. To... Yeah, and then Greg, you're, 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 with your tools, you you instill even more confidence and insight into you know what's actually happening, right? Right. I, I, I apologize what? to do this. I wanted to get a cat caught up here, Greg. Did we did we go into some of Greg's tools? Not well? yet. Yeah. That's so, okay. This is a good segue, actually. Yeah. yeah into it. Sorry, Greg. I cut you off. Please carry on. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Um, the the. The kit that we have, you know, when we're talking about the diagnostic aids that we that we carry, um, we, we call them diagnostic aids because they're measurement tools that give you an idea of how a particular part of the stomatonathic system is functioning and give you objective measures of that. And we designed it, and I know that, um, you know, Dentifor likes it this way, so that every piece is modular, right? So like the tools that we have, the, the big four, our joint vibration analysis records the pops and clicks of the TM joint and fluid disc and bone all have different densities. So they resonate at different frequencies. So using JVA, I can say, this is how the TM joint is functioning now and then change mandibular position. How is it functioning in this new position? And how you achieve that bite, you know, whatever dental philosophy, whatever splint you want to use, that's entirely up to you. We don't preach that. All we do is say, how is it actually functioning before you touch them? And then you made this change. And the really, it's more complex than this, but imagine you have a patient who has a displaced disc that is popping on with a lot of power, right? Total integral or the the newtons per square meter of 200, just bang when they open and bang when they close. And then you move and they have a full range of motion, but the joints are functioning silently as they should, right? Or uh, you have a little bit of a vibration in the joint and you move the jaw and it gets more powerful, right? I mean, that's that's how this guides you. It's like, well, maybe we don't want to go in that direction. 
Um, the, the second tool we have, and we, we normally start, start and dentifor is this way. Let's look at the joint. You know, this goes back to the Dawson Panky days of mm -hmm. all occlusal analysis starts with the TM joint, yeah. right? I mean, that's kind of ubiquitous in, in European and North American dentistry. And so is the joint functioning normally? We then have electromyography, which is everywhere in medicine. How are the muscles of the head and neck resting? How are they functioning? When you clench, are the masseters recruiting the same strength or are you chewing on one side or clenching on one side more than the other? Is this the EMG? Yeah, that's the electromyography, the EMG system. And again, that's modular, right? We have, we have doctors coming from a joint-based philosophy, starting with JBA. We have doctors coming from a neuromuscular philosophy, starting with looking at muscles. Um, we have uh, the T-scan. We're the, we're the number one distributor in the world of the, of the T-scan, which is amazing. And it's, it's the one device that we have that I don't understand how you do dentistry without. I literally don't understand how you <laughs> it's do cool, dentistry. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. You, you bite on this wafer, and it shows the force timing and balance of the occlusion. Um, and I, I don't know if there's a graphic there on the screen, but it'll actually show the arch and show the power of your bite on each individual tooth. I mean, imagine finishing a, a, a crown on the upper first molar and you have the patient bite and this happened to me. It is. 40, that, that's, that's actually the JVA, but that's, no. that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great graphic. This is, this is a go. normal JVA, right? What this shows is the patient opening and closing. That's the green line, the patient's opening and then closing the green line when it goes up, those spikes in the pink right and left joints are the teeth hitting. So there's nothing between the tooth contact. That's a normal joint function. But this T-scan, what it'll show, I actually had a crown done by a, a dentist friend of mine, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit it. Um, <laughs> but you know that he did buddy dentistry. He's like, yeah, you need a crown on what, what we in the U.S. call 14. So I show up over lunch. He's literally got a sandwich while he's seating 14. And he goes, should we T-scan it? I went, I got to get back to the office. I'll, I'll do it when I get back. I get back. 14 is killing me the next day. I bite on the T-scan and 64% of my bite force is on that crown. Oh, wow. So I had to drive back to his office and I, I bite on his T-scan and he calls me an idiot. And we adjust it so that <laughs> now it's properly loaded, Right. But I mean, how do you look at dots on the teeth, right? And know how much force there is. If you look at the research of occlusal indicating paper, it tells you something touched there at some point mm -hmm. from closure to opening, yeah. but it doesn't give you any information. There's no research that says, oh, a donut means this, or a streak means that, or a tight dot means this. There, it, it has absolutely none of that information. So what the T-scan does is allow you to see what is the occlusal scheme of your patient, allows you to measure, do they have anterior guidance? Do they have canine guidance? When your patient goes into lateral excursions, does the non-working side disclude and the working side guide as it should? And what's amazing is it's the dentists in the 40, 50, and 60-year-old group that, have a, that look at T-scan and go, wow, that, that's, that's a lot of tech. The young dentists are like, why weren't we taught this? This makes all the sense in the world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To actually measure the forces in the occlusion instead of waiting until you have a ton of silver in your hair to know what you're looking at because mm -hmm. of experience. So I have a question. Um, so I had yeah. a, a, an intraoral scan by a fairly well-known scanner mm -hmm. in the world. I had, well, I had it today at an office. We all, we're all, we all know. Um, so when they, and they showed me the scan afterwards and they said, you're biting down hard on the left side. So in this particular scan, they showed me on the screen, these teeth right. showed up red and then the front ones were blue. And mm -hmm. then these, there was a little bit of red, yeah. but not too much on this side. So I was coming down heavy back here. So, yeah. um, so it would have been great to have the T scan. As a matter of fact, I've been getting asked by clients here in Canada in Vancouver, um, for the T scan. Uh, I work for a pretty large distributor of supplies. Yeah. Um, which you may know, a company called Henry Shine. Um, I've heard of them. I've heard yeah, of them. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're obscure name. But, um, they're about 50, they're, their headquarters is about 15 miles from my house. Okay. In West Dallas, Wisconsin. So yeah, <laughs> there you I go. Know them. 
So, um, so when I watched that scan today, it was kind of compelling, and I was like, you know, so now that I hear you talk about the T scan, I'm yep. going to call her right after this uh, this podcast and say this is the tool you need because uh, how is an intraoral scan telling you how heavy your bite is? Well, it's great technology, and what it what the intraoral cameras and what the 3D you know um, descriptions can show you is if the patient closes with the exact vertical, lateral, AP, pitch roll, and yaw that we are assuming in the, in, in the computer model, this is where the forces should be. It doesn't really translate into the mouth. The research has shown that it doesn't translate into the patient's mouth. And I think the reason is, is that what we're not able to take into account yet, we are doing the research, is how are their Temporalis, masseters, SCMs, buccinators, right. or bicularis oris. How are all of these muscles firing? How is the joint moving? And exactly what is the directional vectors that the mandible is taking in these tiny movements that include proprioception and nociception? Right. The T-scan just says, well, this is how you're biting, right? Wow. The, so, so you can get a really good idea in the build stage. I am not. I am not criticizing those technologies in any no, way, either. shape, not or form. Yeah. No, but they're but, not. But yeah. they're not to the, the technology has not gotten to the point where it's predictive in the individual's mouth yet. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so now you can say, okay, we built it as good as we could. Seat bite. This is what I'm seeing here, and then fix it up. And, and, and the applications are really endless from, from individual crowns to, you know, full arch dentistry to you were talking about implants. One of the beauties of, of, of the, of the T-scan is you can watch the natural teeth come into contact and actually settle and then time your implant to come into occlusion because implants don't move the way natural teeth do, course, right? Yeah. When you have two opposing teeth come together, First they touch and then they settle into their sockets and the and the periodontal ligaments, right, are are mm -hmm. stretched. So those teeth are mobile. The mm -hmm. implant next to a natural teeth not is mobile. not mobile. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so now you it really gives you a great, great uh, ability to control the occlusion. Now, before we get into all of that, one of the big things is education, right? Is to the, the tools are great, but if you don't know how to use them, you know, that kind of lost you know i've got a hammer i know how to use it you know i you get you give a monkey a nail gun and you just end up with a net a mess right um one of the things that i would strongly recommend is in may i don't have the dates but may i know 12th, dr morangos is gonna be what is it may 12th 13th may, may 12 and 13 dr yeah, morangos is exactly. gonna be giving his course on expanding beyond being a single tooth dentist. And, and, and that's where he starts to introduce some of these concepts, right? And what we've done in conjunction with Denifor and in conjunction with Dennis and, and Dr. Leem is try and build a system that as you grow in your practice, as you start to do more complex cases, you'll know where you're uncomfortable. You know, is it with stabilization of the TM joint? Is it with finishing with a balanced occlusion? And then we can work with you and we have educational opportunities to make sure that now that you're growing, you can handle these new challenges and control the changes that you're now creating within these patients. Mm -hmm. um, just to support what you're saying there, Greg and guys, where we see you know, the dentist is trying to figure out, is this right for me? I, I think there's two basic docs that are really going to extract a lot out of this program, this Denifor phase two program. One is the, the docs that have actually purchased Greg's or from BioResearch, their equipment oh, yeah. or some components. And now, like you just said, let's put it to, here's Dennis. He's a veteran, Dr. Marengo's in using it and making it make them money so they get you know return on their investment that they've made mm -hmm. that's the first one and then there's also the ones that general dentists that are this is all new to them okay and they want to do it a world-class level dentistry mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be not just profitable in doing larger treatment plans but do it right so it lasts 15 20 years mm -hmm. what we all aspire for this 
and now find a system to get going. And it doesn't mean you have to buy all this equipment to do it right, right. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just right. really want to make sure that's really yeah. clear. But as you get some cases under your belt, you're going to realize that eventually you will need a, a T scan. You're going to want right. uh, the JVA and you're, you're going to expand into those things as you get more proficient. So, bottom line is the people that need this type of treatment exist in your patient base. Whether you yeah. have that knowledge, or you don't. They're all there. They're all there. So they either come to see you to do that or they find out that somebody else is doing it down the street. And that's just well, kind of it. Yeah. One, like, one, of, the things, more. one of the things Sorry. that we have found in the practices that start to grow, right, is that your practice is really an inexhaustible resource of dentistry. I mean, just to have a standard, everyday, straight, white, drill and fill practice, you know, you, you, you always have to look for new patients, right? The new patients getting new patients coming in and to grow your practice. But within that population, you have patients that are, you know, craniofacially compromised, that have larger needs, that have larger desires. And what the Denifor, the thing that I love about the Denifor uh, educational model is it helps you to start look at looking at and identifying those patients and you don't have to get to them today right what one of the things that you'll learn is okay these are some these are some red flags of some really big complicated cases right. and that can help you help guide you to in your education what you want to work for for what's already in your practice you yeah. know um, and whether that's joint issues or occlusal issues or aesthetic issues, cosmetic issues, you're so, able to grow at your own pace. Mm -hmm. So at, when it right. comes to it, so here, Greg, you can you can use this, throw this number around too when you're out in the boat. Sure. Um, when it comes to practice growth, new patients only account for 9% of your growth. Right. The rest. So our philosophy is, yes, we want to acquire patients, but we want to keep them. So... If you're right. offering this type of service, you're if you're alleviating, you know, uh, jaw joint pain, headaches, and airway issues, yep. they're they're not going anywhere. If you're oh, taking them out of yeah. pain, especially, right. no, yeah. no, yeah, they're not. Well, yeah. and in addition, in addition to that, you don't have to be. Um, I remember having uh, breakfast one morning with uh, Pete Dawson. Um, you know, God rest his soul. Um, and he said, you know, everybody's talking about doing full mouth reconstructions and I've done thousands of them, one tooth at a time over a course of 20 years. And when you think about it, right, you, you don't have to be the doctor who's doing full arch dentistry, right? But if you're doing shot, a tooth yeah. a year because yeah. they are continually breaking down Right. You end up over a course of 20 years, you did a full mouth reconstruction on this patient. Right. Right. And so being able to identify, hey, you've got some physiologic things that are just beating up your teeth, because if you're physiologically correct, your teeth should last a lifetime, even the inordinately long lifetimes that we're living now okay. into your 70s and 80s. Right. right. I mean, we didn't evolve this way. Right. A lifespan 150 years ago was 38, something mm -hmm. like that, right? Now we're living twice as long, but our teeth should be able to last that that mm -hmm. long. And, and the nice thing with Denifor, that I keep going back to them, but they've built up such a cadre of clients who are educated and advanced in this and really have that camaraderie versus competition aspect. 100%. That doc, mm -hmm. doctors coming into the system as you start learning, you get a case that's a little complicated. Yeah, bio research is there, Denifor is there, but our clients are there. Hey, I've got a I've got a gal in your area who's an expert in all of this. I'm sure she'd be happy to help you. Do you know what I mean? And and yeah. hold your hand, you know, as you go through this case. Yeah. If the patient wants to move faster than than you're really comfortable, you yeah. have mentors and you have you have consultants that can work with you on these cases. Um, when uh, uh, David and I were in a practice uh, last weekend, 
We were also talking about um, this, 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 this clinician that just went through Dentifor that they'd be the only one in the area to be able to offer this service. So having, having that sort of that feather in their cap that they can advertise in the area. Yeah, well, like one of the comments we made, Tyler, when we were at that office, the first question I asked, it was a little staff meeting, okay, with after the course, I'll meet with the office and I'll say, hey, you know, what kind of questions so that, because the dentist can't do it on their own unless they have the staff support, right. Mm-hmm. okay? Right. So I says, I asked them, I says, I have this little prize for you guys here. Um, what sets you apart from the dentist in a five kilometer radius from you right now? His prize, if you can find one thing, they'll separate you all of them they mentioned cosmetic well that doesn't yeah everyone advertises cosmetic dentistry scanners no everyone's got scanners what chair side milling the other one was Invisalign. there's always someone else in in that does it invisalign whatever it is but you ask them if they actually know how to optimize a uh, occlusion to you know that complements jaw joint, Mm -hmm. airway, that that harmony, there's very rarely there's someone in the five kilometer radius. And that's what we want to make sure that docs really set themselves apart from the rest of the the Mm -hmm. people out there. And yeah, again, they're, they're not alone. They've got uh, great support and, 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 you know, ocean ceramics in in this area and Greg and everything that your, you know, your teams have to offer in the, the equipment um Marangos, Liam, yeah. like the the help is there, the mentors are there. Um you but don't, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So, you know, even Mark, getting into one of these courses to find out if if it's something yeah. that you want to roll out. I'd never had breakfast with uh Dr. Dawson before, but I did actually was in a course with Carl Mish, who's kind of one of the godfathers oh, of, yeah. of um implant dentistry. And I'll never forget this quote. And I actually wrote it down and emailed him back in the day. Is this correct quote? And he says, the number one reason for implant failure, he spoke to the whole group of of doctors there, is the inability to control the biomechanical forces in the mouth. (laughs) And I've, I've almost memorized that verse because... That is the number one reason, even still today, that I feel that implants don't survive a long, uh, a long time. You got to be able to control those biomechanical forces, which is clenching, grinding, bruxing, heavy night all, guard, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Yep. And even the night guard, it protects the teeth, but it doesn't stop the biomechanical forces. Of course, it's still happening, yeah. Yes. So, well, it, that's it, what we're trying. It, it can yeah. make make it worse in yeah. some cases, right? Yeah. So, anyways. Right. That's my only claim to fame. Of course. Well, um, you know, to, to add to add to that, it's not just implants. Um, yeah, you know, if, if you you roll through you know, when you're in dentistry and you roll through social media, you'll see the ads. Did your clear aligners fail? Use our mm. clear aligners. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So basically, what they're saying is you used orthodontics to move the teeth. Yeah. Into a way where the joint muscles or the occlusal forces or the airway didn't want them and the forces move them back out of the way. I mean, the only reason teeth move is forces, Correct. right? Yeah. And so if you have someone who, oh yeah, I have a a, a retainer put in forever. It's permanently in there. So my teeth stay straight. What they're saying is I have a metal bar in my mouth to hold my teeth where they don't want to be. (laughs) Where my yeah, joint, yeah. my muscles, <laughs> my airway, or the teeth themselves don't want to be there because there are forces thing. pushing them. But we've decided it's best to just cram that shoe in that, that foot in that little shoe. I mean, you got to have that really beautiful smile for Instagram, it, though, Craig. I, yeah. I, have, I, have I have a loved one whom I won't name. I'm sure she won't be watching this, but she's on her third set, my little sister, um, third set of clear aligners. And it's like, I, hopefully this one, this one's supposed to keep my teeth where, where they, where they should be. And I'm like, yeah. it's because they're not where they should be. They're happy to keep you know taking I mean? your money too. You know what? Like, yeah. I, I often Absolutely. think like, what is that going to mean the, the future of a lot of people's like airway and, and like, everything that's going to be compromised because and, of that. And, and, and again, it's like, it's like the scanners. I'm not 
criticizing the technology. Yeah. Clear liners yeah. is an amazing technology. Yeah. But it but they do not give you the ability to ignore jaw joint function, craniofacial muscle physiology, or the occlusion. You're a yeah, dentist. Yeah. That that's your world. That's and and if you change that, now you own it. Yeah. And yes. so, you know, Dave, you had you had talked about I, I don't like the 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 selling by fear using the the threat of a lawsuit mm -hmm. but we have never bio research has never had a client who used our equipment to document where they left a patient or the decisions they made on joint muscle <laughs> occlusal health they have never lost a case oh, because yeah, they're making very, they're making yeah. a decision based on objective data and then a logical decision yeah. right Negative, negative outcomes in medicine happen all the time. I mean, they just do, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, patients die on the operating table every single day. Did you make a decision based on the data that was presented before you? Yeah. Yes, I did. And because of X, I did Y. That makes sense. You know what I mean? And so, so you have better results, but you also have objective reasoning for why you made the decisions you did yeah right and I, I think today like when i when i go back to the scan that i had this morning again one of the latest technologies on the market one of the most advanced scanners mm -hmm. and they said you're heavy on the left side so i saw the red and then when she continued her exam she's like yeah when you open you're clicking a little bit on that side now so that might tell me that you know your bite force there's some clicking going on so for mm -hmm. me knowing that she has all the technology my my take on it is like, hey, you know what? Now there's another tool. Like I, I'm double clicking, pardon the pun, on this <laughs> mm -hmm. bio uh, JVA tool because I'm looking at it going, right. well, this might be a, now a great adjunct for her for me to say, you know what? Have you have you yeah. seen the bio JVA tool? This might be the next step in my treatment. Mm -hmm. I might go in there in a couple of weeks and say, you know what? Remember you talked about the clicking? Sure. They've got a great um, uh, sleep uh, clinician in there who does TM, TMJ, TM, TMD. Mm -hmm. TMD. Um, so and they're really well equipped to deal with this type of treatment. So for me, I might be saying to her, did you know that there's a tool that can help diagnose this, give you another way to diagnose what's happening in my mouth? Um, so for right. me, seeing a tool like this is really inspiring. It's really cool. Well, when you, when you think about it, and part of the reason that we don't have a treatment philosophy, right, is there are the, the main groups really look at joint function, muscle function, occlusal function, airway, and psychology, right? Those are, the, those are the big five, right? Joint, muscles, occlusion, airway, psych. All of those are important. But when you look at dentistry, think about the um, anatomy of the TM joint. You have the condyle and the disc and the fossa. The, the pterygoid attaches to the condyle and the disc. So if you displace the disc, you shorten the pterygoid, the superior head of the pterygoid. So the joint and the muscles are inextricably linked. How do you separate tooth position and joint position? Look at any skull, right? They're all together. So joint, muscle, and teeth are interrelated and interdependent. And so what we've tried to do and what the Dentifor philosophy does is look at, okay, yes, we're dealing with teeth, but we're making changes to the joint and to the muscle. Let's do this gradually. Let's do this with knowledge. And let's do this as predictably and reversibly as possible. And that's what our tools do. And that's what the Dentifor education does. Outstanding. Outstanding. And, and Just throw a metal, metal bar on it. Yeah. No, just to add to kind of add to what Greg was saying too. Uh, a lot of docs aren't aware of this, but you know the college that they are kind of ruled over or follow. Mm -hmm. um, it's very clear that they most colleges don't endorse opening and changing VDOs. Okay, mm -hmm. especially right. general dentists. Okay, um, it's, it's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. So now. It's not to say that they can't do that, but if you are and you want to get into this, you have to have that kind of uh, record gathering process. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're teaching docs how to do so they don't get themselves into trouble. 
okay, mm -hmm. with their college and or in a court of law if, mm -hmm. you know, a patient takes a run at them. Makes now, sense. when they follow these steps, they're not getting a run at them. It's the docs that are opening up occlusions and don't right. have a proper record of where they've come from. Those are the ones that are more open and susceptible to happen. And that's why we feel this. We know, like, I, I don't know. Can you focus on this for a second? Um, which, um, which, which lens would this this uh, here, I got view a, I've actually got a, I've see? got an idea here. Because I just wanted to show, like, just a quick, you know, we have cases all the time where they're dental cripples. We call them dental cripples Oof. that come in here, okay? And oh, wow. this patient's evolved to this position, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we know we can't restore. It doesn't matter how those go, but those teeth are mowed down. They, they have to be restored, Yes. okay? Now, are we going to restore it to that old physiological or current CO, centric occlusion? No. Um, the patient's going to not be happy and they have a lot of other issues. So now what we do is, is we've taken the time and now you can show Mark just real quickly. We know this is the new position that the patient has an optimal airway, jaw joint and muscles. Now, if you would look at that, that's wildly open. But we have a plan of how to design and engineer it so it complements uh, the conjular fossa, wow. that the function and the airway is all done properly. So this is the kind of equipment that you're going to have when you come out of this this program. That's a that's a monumental mm -hmm. difference. That's huge. It is, and you would never just come out of that by arbitrarily opening it on an articulator and restoring to it. You'd right. never come to that position. Right. And so, in that case, that case, you're you're looking at, you know. Okay, how was the joint functioning beforehand? How were the muscles resting over exactly, clothes right. like that, yeah. right? And they're all yeah. in spasm. And yeah. all of a sudden we make this change and now the joint is functioning smooth and clear again. And the muscles are resting when the patient tries to relax. And when they bite at that vertical dimension, they can actually have good recruitment, proper recruitment of the masseters primarily and the temporalis following. And you, know, you go into all of this and then in the finish, are you biting balanced left Frank. right with forces are you you know yeah you can control it so greg i got one more question for you maybe you can help yeah. help me with this i do have prominent prosthodontists that have it have asked me when i shared them with this kind of philosophy of treating mm -hmm. airway jaw joint muscles where's the peer research on this you know to do it mm -hmm. to a new video that is yeah. optimal. It, where do they look? Where do I point them to look? Actually, oh, I, I wish you had told me ahead of time. I, I have people reach out to Denifor because there is, there are a couple of online journals. You know, one of the problems with peer reviewed literature yeah. is you have to be a peer, right? <laughs> and so a there's, a, there's, there's a fair amount of in a particular treatment philosophy. If you yeah. say something that's really new, your peers are like, well, no, we don't, we don't believe in that. You yeah. know, you see this kind of yeah. circular logic. Um, but there, there is, um, uh, uh, Ben Sutter, Robert Kirstein, John Radke have an online journal. It's a bit of a complicated name. The, the technologies, tips and techniques, Oh, it's an open source journal and it's all about craniofacial physiology and Love the reads are, I mean, it's all read all over the world. I can send you a, I can Love send that. you the link to it. If you go to our website or email us at info at bioresearch yeah. and say that you want, you know, the, the, the craniofacial literature source, we can get that to you straight away. Beautiful. Um, but the other thing I want to do is, you know, we had mentioned the the dental colleges and, and the, the universities that teach dentists. I get a lot of, why didn't my college teach me this? Right. And the thing people have to realize is that what a college does, whether it's a dental school or a business school, is they create beginning dentists and yeah. their job is to create competent beginning dentists, yeah. competent beginning business people competent beginning accountants, whatever it is, their job is not to churn out experienced experts. That's mm -hmm. not what they do, right? They get you to where you can begin practicing. 
Yeah. Some never moved beyond that. I, I was actually very young in my career and I saw a gentleman who was at a, at a meeting and he had just ribbons from like the past 40 years he had been at this course. And I said, and he was a prosthodontist. And I, and I said, the changes that you've seen in prosthodontics over the past, how long? And he said, 48 years. I said, over 48 <laughs> years. I mean, think about what pros was yeah. like 48 years ago. Yeah. I go, that must just be monumental. And he said, well, it's pretty much all the same. I went to a pretty good school. This is a guy who's never learned anything new. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he yeah. goes through the courses that tell him what he was told. He feels yeah. smart mm -hmm. and, and he doesn't progress. And unfortunately, you know, ha that's about half of dentistry. It but is. there is that group, that top 20% that realize that CE isn't a requirement. It's a way of life. Yeah. Right. And, and dentistry is going to change. I mean, you, you look at how it's changed in the last five years. <clears throat> Yeah. Think about the next five years. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking about like the technology alone. That's that's oh. changing the face of of, of right. dentistry. And if if you're right. not up with what what T scan can do, or the right. latest intraoral scanner or CBCT can do in your practice, right? And as we blend these technologies, and all of a sudden your CBCT or your design software starts taking into account actual right. mandibular movement or actual muscle activity or the actual functional occlusion, which we are working on, um, you know, these are all things that are just going to revolutionize dentistry and just mm -hmm. keep it moving forward. And the people who win are the people who stay in education and stay on the forefront. Yeah. You know, yeah. not experimental, but just this is what we found works best. Absolutely. You know, and that's the beauty I, yeah. of health, bringing that to bringing that to the dentists. I think they set standard of practice, don't they? Is the forefront of of, of the yeah. knowledge, right? Yeah. Cool. It's Anything else, guys? Yeah. I think like we've covered quite a bit. I think here. you were just going to mention <clears throat> that an event that's coming up, right? Uh, oh, other than right. obviously our Dentifor date on May twelfth, but you got something coming up, Greg? Right? Yeah. Right? Um, June fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth in Denver. Um, we have our midsummer conference, and what we do is we bring in experts in jaw joint function, craniofacial muscle function, um, occlusal function and dynamics, um, ortho restorative, and 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 TMD craniofacial pain. And what these doctors do, what this is, is this is a group of people who are all trying to learn more. And what's the beauty is they don't all agree on philosophy. No, and yeah. so. You will, you will hear differing views on this is how I approach my patient. And just think of how different it would be. One person starts looking at balancing the occlusion, but the joint isn't balanced. So yeah. the joint stays unbalanced. How do you balance an occlusion with an unstable TM joint? Well, okay, then stabilize the joint. Well, but then I've changed the occlusion. How do I fix that? You know what I mean? So it's a very, there's lively debate but it is really a, a cadre of doctors that are measuring and objectively looking at the changes they make and freely sharing that knowledge with each other. So mm -hmm. that is June 15, 16, 17. If you reach out to Dentifor, reach out to, what's your email? Dave? Just, could yeah. post it here. David at david at oceanceramics.com. Email David at oceanceramics.com and, and ask him, for the offer and we'll give you that summer it's conference for sweet. half off. It's yeah. normally just shy of two grand for the three days and you'll get it for nine ninety five. Um, just David can give you that, that information. And uh, you can always visit our website at bioresearchinc.com mm -hmm. and uh, click on dental education, but let us know that you're coming from this, from the DOD yeah, or the dental sure. for That's podcast. That's where you get the promo. Yeah. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you so much for that, Greg. Yeah. Um, hey, my David, pleasure. Let's let's talk about that for when let's get Yeah, so that. at the end of the day this uh, May 12th, 13th is uh, it's a, always a Friday Saturday. Um, as I said this course is something that's going to equip you not only to do uh, larger cases but actually um, how to present them. You know, it's not easy to present a 20, 30,000 plus dollar case oh, 100%, yeah. and uh you know that's literally half the battle is how you how you talk about that how you present that to a patient and um mm -hmm. and then you know obviously the other half is doing it good so 
and executing it. So we don't teach doctors how to prep a tooth, okay? We, they've learned all that stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, we're gonna teach you how to navigate through uh, delivering a case to uh, something that is, like I said, you have an optimized airway, jaw joint, muscle, and teeth, and something that looks uh, natural and beautiful and functions like a Ferrari in the mouth. So I don't think you could ask much more for um, restorative cases. So yeah, love it. Cool. And I would be remiss um, to say that list your practice on dentist on demand. Yes. <laughs> That's right. We, we we know how to grow a practice. We we agree with these fellas and and on the philosophy of doing it right, doing it with knowledge. Yeah and doing it with the right support um, mm -hmm. and, and surrounding yourselves with the right as experts to, mm -hmm. to grow your practice. And I'm going to add to that and say that we have one of the best videographers in the business sitting right here talking to you. So if you do have a listing on Dennis On Demand, get this guy out to shoot a video for you. I've got a couple of people today that well, they're, they're asking for you. So. You've booked me on two. Thank you. I know. Today was busy. That was, that's why I was late, guys. I had people ask me to get Mark out for their video shoot. So, you know. Hey, I will yeah. trade you back. That's right. Yeah, so, right, right. But a listing does get you a video shoot. So uh, definitely shoot uh, Mark. So Mark at DennisOnDemand.com or Tyler at DennisOnDemand.com. That's a lot of promos. Yeah, it is. So it's a lot of stuff flying around. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, let's get a camera out to your practice and let's tell your story through video it's uh, it's the most impactful way to sell your to sell your brand and sell your vision for dentistry and if you have some of these tools in your practice and you are uh, you know rolling out the done for philosophy and you want to yep. reach these people even in your own practice space and I said that uh, like nine yeah. percent of your growth is new patients we believe it's not about well it is about acquiring patients but let's keep patients and how do we do that you exactly. offer amazing things like uh, what we can do here. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is I want to get one of my clients, one of my using the BioJVA joint vibration analysis tool. Mm -hmm. I want to shoot a video yeah. of that. I'm really fascinated by this sure. tool. Of course, you've got a, a, an great, amazing yeah. complement of, of tools and and, uh, in, and equipment here, but I kind of want to see this thing in action. Uh, also, the sure. EMG one. I'd like to see how these function. I'd like to get some video on that so I can share that with my clients well, here. You know, and actually, Tyler, Dave, Dave knows this, but. One of the things that we do is, you know, my team, we are very relationship oriented. You, you're not going to run into us and get a, what's it going to take to put a JVA in your practice today kind of a thing. We want to get to know you. We want to get to know where your practice is going, what you're trying to accomplish. And then we help steer your education in that direction. And the tools come when you're ready for them. You know what I mean? You, right. never, you never reach for a hammer when you're in the planning stage, you know, kind of a thing. But one of the things that we're very heavy on is any and all of the training that, that we provide when you get the equipment, we'll give that training to you in the learning stage. Because there are doctors who say, you know what, I really want to know what it is before I invest in it. Great. Let's give you the training. And, and we've just found that that educational model works best for us and works best for our clients. So we'll set that up for you. For sure. Perfect. Amazing. No problem. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I think we're, we're all type A personalities. We could probably talk for another yeah. four hours. Um, <laughs> I, I just think, well, uh, you know, Greg, let's have you back on. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks that. for your time love today. Yeah. Um, let's follow up when we get when we start getting some some of our clients using uh, some of this equipment. Yeah. Let's come yeah, back. Sure. Let's come back. Yeah, to it. for sure. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Final words. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah. That's yeah. right. No, that's all right. awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Greg. It was great to meet you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been God great. Bless. Take care. Take care.